It's a convenient way to make a payment, but those apps could be putting your money at risk. Finance professor Dan Riccato has some tips for keeping your payment apps transactions safe. Good morning, Dan. Thanks for joining us. What's up, Jose? Hi, Mel. Hello. Hello. Now, how have the apps changed our spending behaviors and patterns? Yeah, big time. Which ones do you guys use? Do you use any of these apps? Um, only all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer, Melissa. Um, Jose, listen, there's 101 million folks using these things right now. And that's just in this country alone. $53 billion of payments last year. It's huge. The big ones, obviously, are Apple Pay, Venmo, PayPal. Look on Melissa's phone. You'll see them all there. Mm -hmm. And um, listen, we are addicted to these things. They're convenient, easy to use, for the most part safe, but there are some wrinkles. All right, let's talk about the wrinkles so we are in the know. I can tell you one wrinkle is having my teens use it because they, uh, uh -huh. they ring up the charges pretty fast. But what else do you want to make sure we know about it? I'm glad you said that, Melissa. It's so easy to blow your budget, especially younger consumers. Just tap it, swipe mm -hmm. it. You know, who cares where the money comes from? Um, one of the things that I've cautioned consumers about is, remember, you don't have FDIC insurance. So with Venmo, for example, if you hold a balance on the app that's not insured so that's something to be mindful of you're not earning interest while those funds are on the app as well and there's always the risk of fraud again these things are great they're convenient we all use them i do but you have to be careful mm -hmm. you mentioned fraud what are the things that we really need to be thinking in terms of before we spend some money on one of these apps Number one, Jose, let's only stick stick with the top apps, right? Uh, Apple Pay, Venmo, PayPal. Stick with the ones that are well-known, well-accepted, and have really run the gamut in terms of risk. Um, sweep your funds regularly to your bank. Don't leave your funds in the app. Sweep it to your bank so that way you've got the insurance. Only shop on trusted sites. And finally, as we just talked about, especially you younger consumers out there, listen up, teenagers, Melissa's kids, <laughs> stay on budget because it's really easy to blow your budget when all you have to do is swipe or tap. Yeah, speaking yeah. of that budget, how do we, what is your suggestion as we head into the summer months? And really, especially older teenagers, yeah. they, it's their way to pay for their gas to, to get by. What how, Ideas of how we can all pull this off successfully? Great question. So one of the things I like to do is say, let's meet them where they are. They're smartphones. Mm -hmm. So the good news is that we can put a budgeting app like Mint or others that you and I have reported on mm -hmm. on your smartphone so that, yes, you're going to be using, using your smartphone to spend money, but you're also going to be using your smartphone to watch your money, to budget your money. So let's meet them where they are. Dan, a lot of information that we could be using. I just don't happen to have any children right now who are using <laughs> apps like that. <laughs> well, I just wrote down Mint to remind myself, and we'll be working on that tonight. Thank you very much, Dan. Hope you have a great weekend. <laughs> Jose, I'm going to send my four children your way. Love you guys. <laughs> we'll let him pay for you, them for you, a while. You don't have to do me any favors, Dan. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> See you guys.